we have been overwhelmed by your response. Many people have posed the optical question direct to my team and I. They know what we do for them. But what can active leaders in optics and photonics do for us? The answer is simple. By joining Optica as a corporate member, you encourage us to expand our trusted global network and support our new range of services. Get deep insights into what's next for your sector in photonics with free access to over 90 market reports, plus exclusive access to the PowerPoint slides for the in-person meetings. And corporate members get exclusive access to all Optica industry meetings in 2024, including the VIP reception during Photonics West, or executive forum during OFC, the Freeform Optics Industry Summit in Rochester, New York, hosted by Optimax, the Advanced Manufacturing Industry Summit at SUS Microoptics, the special events at ECOC in Frankfurt, the third Tech Summit in Silicon Valley, the Optica Laser Congress in Osaka, Japan, plus the Optica Quantum Industry Summit this time in Bristol, UK. And remember, being a corporate member of Optica also gives you discounted access to many partner events such as Peak Summit Europe, Driving Vision News and Peak International. Hello, before you shut down for the holidays, grab your calendar and mark it for Tuesday 16th of January for the next online industry meeting. Of course, it's earlier in the month this time because of the face-to-face -face meetings oh, at Photonics West. The theme on the 16th is quantum computing. There are currently several approaches to quantum computing and all of them involve photonics in some way lasers for trapping ions, spectrometers to characterize cool atoms, or integrated photonics for creating and manipulating qubits. From the Quantum Industry Summit at Lion Tech, we learn that the main challenges are threefold. Highly efficient and miniaturized single photon detectors, narrow line with laser diodes, and photonic packaging with the lowest insertion losses ever. Because, and I will never get tired of saying this, in quantum, every single photon counts. To answer the quantum optical question, what can every single photon do for quantum? And what can the quantum industry do for photonics? The following experts will be in the room. But remember, you are all invited to come and voice your challenges, needs, and technology capabilities. Join Puya Diana Tanai and Valerian Gis, Quandela, Laura Nugent, Quantinium, Polan Imani, Icarus Computing, Peter Null, Inflection, Christine Bohm, Photonic, Maxine Sieg, Aijik, Jelmer Renema, Quicks, or Catherine Simondi, ID Quantic. And to support their needs, some of our corporate members will share one slide, and those are Toptica, Lionix, Advanced Microfoundry, AMF, Modulite, Hamamatsu, Menlo, or Keystone Photonics, among many others. You are all invited. Everyone in the Optica corporate engagement team has worked very hard on this. And they are all waiting to start. I can't wait anymore. Let's go live, right? Everyone, thank you very much for finally 
finally we are here at the Quantum Industry Summit online. We have worked really hard to bring all of you together and on the next two hours, what we're going to do on the next two hours, you know what it is, is to find ways of working together. It was a fantastic Christmas and now we're back and it's snowing dramatically, heavily here in Washington, D.C. And I'm pretty sure that when we go to Modulite, they're going to tell us that they're going to be like minus 18 degrees or something. Let's start with a fantastic meeting. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Jose Poza. I'm speaking on behalf of Optica, the former OSA. Optica, the leading platform for oh. photonics and optics exchange. And I speak on behalf of 184 employees and the corporate engagement department has now 549 corporate members. Thank you so much for your support. What we do for a living is very simple. We find ways of you working together, and these are the people who tell me, who tell us what to do. So if we make any mistake, blame all corporate engagement council. Amy, Esquito, Michael Levy, Reinhard Walker, you know who they are. They are the ones telling us in which direction we should drive the Optica Photonic Industry Network. But today, today is all about quantum computing. Quantum computing in every single way, ions, superconductors, photonics, all of the platforms need laser detector, integrated photonics, need the photonics industry. And we are here to try to solve it. What we do, you know the format. What we do is we have a set of companies who are here with challenges and a set of companies who are here to also with challenges, but also trying to help the challenges of the companies that are being presented. Let's see if we can do the mix and match that we like so much at Optica. I am overwhelmed. We are overwhelmed. Uh, Puya Dianat, Carmen Paños, the entire team is overwhelmed by the amount of companies registered for the meeting today. We are 491 people registered for the meeting, both in YouTube and in the room. I am amazed. Everybody who says quantum winter is coming, <laughs> this is quantum Christmas. Thank you very much all the companies here. Remember, we understand every corporate member and we always position them in the supply chain. This slide in front of you has been published in LinkedIn and will also be part of the report after this meeting. I also would like to remind everyone that today we start our new season of online industry meetings, 27 February, marketing your calendar. is about new space. We want to understand the needs of the space agencies or the space companies and match it with the technology of our members. 27th of February, new space. Very interesting for many of you active in QKD. But let's continue today and remind everyone that if you go to optica.org slash market reports, we have our latest quantum report there and many other. Optica.org slash market reports. All the market reports there are for free for all the corporate members. Thank you very much for your support. And the last thing I'm going to tell you is that this meeting it's also live streaming YouTube. So I hope you're looking your best because it's going to stay there forever. Hello, YouTubers of the world. Thank you very much for joining the meeting. If you have any question, post it in the chat and I will read it in the room. And that's, of course, also valid for the people with me in the Zoom room. If you have any question during the meeting, please put it in the chat and you will have the chance to voice it. I think it is time to start. Puya Diana, are you ready? I'm ready. We're going to start. I'm ready. With let's let's one... start. You know, Puya. I have been doing this job for quite many years, and I was running another association before that, many people know this, and we didn't have any quantum companies. And eventually, a company from, from Paliso, from France, two people, very handsome guys, joined, and they were the first quantum company that joined that association. Now we are here with many companies in an optics and photonic industry because of that brave move by Quandela. Valerian Gies, thank you very much for being such a good friend of mine. Thank you for being a corporate member of Optica, and thank you for opening the Quantum Summit today. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to Paliso, goes to Quandela. Hello, thank you, thank you very much, Jose. Thank you, Puya. Uh, it's really my pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, well, this morning, this afternoon, I don't know wherever you are, and to open this session. So let me take one moment just to share my screen. And um, should be okay. Uh, so thank you very much, Jose. You have been following the journey of Candela since 2017, six years ago already. Uh, at the very beginning, we were building only single photon sources. And now uh, Candela designs and builds useful quantum computers to drive society and industry quantum transformation. So I'm Valerian Gies, one of the co-founders of Candela. I'm very pleased to be, to be here to present and to introduce Candela's roadmap, the product, 
and also to have some exchanges with some of you. Uh, very briefly, the hair technology of Candela that I mentioned already, uh, this is these devices that you can see, electronic microscopy image, uh, unique device that the brightest, the most efficient that you can find around the world. This is now ready to be industrialized. We have invested in our own clean room in Paris region, in Palaiso, like Jose mentioned, to start the volume production of these devices. And this, what it is? This is the brightest, the first um, single near ideal single photon sources. How? Why? It's because we can we can deterministically fabricate quantum dots inside an optical cavity that you can find here. Well, you can you can see here, and with this you can control the qubit which is inside a cavity, which is inside a quantum dot, and you can generate high quality pure single photons to run quantum computations. And then we are already thinking about next generation next of computers generation. by using the spin inside a quantum dot. Unfortunately, I will not have time to go there, but just for you to notice that this is actually a unique building block which will make quantum computers a reality. What about Ascala? Ascala, we are very proud of Ascala. This is our first big quantum computers, which is actually open to all via uh, our cloud. We have spent a lot of time in order to develop our first uh, cloud system, so which is acce fully accessible in cloud.candela.com. And if you register just with your email, no need to uh, big stuff, you can then have access to a scalar. A scalar, how is it made? Basically, this is a single photon source. You generate the photons, and then you take all these photons sent into parallel channels connected to a universal interferometer that can be controlled via our software. And everything is available in the cloud. You can, we have already about 500 users of our Condola cloud uh, from all around the world in many continents, North America, in Europe, Germany, France, UK, Italy, everywhere, and also in Asia, Australia. We have customers from all around the world. This is an open to all platform with, without any restriction, without any limit. Everything is accessible and controllable via Perceval. Perceval, yeah. this is an open source programming framework that we have released about two years ago. This is completely open source. And with Perceval, it's possible to train yourself to simulate quantum circuits based on photons on CPU. And now it's also possible to do it at larger scale on GPU with the best state-of-the-art NVIDIA chips that are available in the world, and with the same software, no need of change uh, the big things, then you can run your program and execute them on a real quantum processors unit, which is available in, which is hosted here in France. <clears throat> Perceval was elected as one of the best, um, more user-friendly framework by Quantum Z guests. If we compare and we look at the different benchmarks, the metrics and the quality of the computation what was done at Ascala, of course there are many things to be done. Uh, first, first metric that we can we can already uh, talk about it's the gate fidelity. Well, actually, it's not only about the gate fidelity because we didn't want to split between different uh, the state preparation and measurement fidelity. So actually, here everything included, we have these gates plus preparation state measurement and measurement uh, fidelities all combined end to end. And with this, actually, we we are at the state of the art if we compare these gates with, with this fidelity with all the other platforms that are available in the world. Plus, we have demonstrated that we can generate a welded GSZ state, which is actually a unique, useful resource that's going to be necessary in order to scale up to build measurement-based quantum computers that's going to be the next generation of quantum computers that's going to be uh, a step forward to closer to, to bring us to closer to the useful applications. I will not enter into more details. Be aware that all the performance and technical information are available in archive and the paper will be published. It already, it's already accepted in Nature Photonics. Just a word about the fact that oops, um, there is there is a possibility to 
to connect, to get access to a lot of tutorial videos. We have all why we did all of this, why we have uh, wanted to have these quantum computers available in the cloud, because we want users, we want people to use them to test and train themselves to, to develop new applications on these platforms. So there's a bunch of tutorials videos that are available on Condela YouTube account. And please be aware that actually now it's possible to simulate at larger scale with dozens of photons on larger photonic chips um, on, on GPU chips, NV, NVIDIA H100. And then uh, in the coming months, we will be releasing new quantum computers in more modes. In in uh, in uh, with more photons and more and larger proce quantum processor units, and then finally, uh, just we have succeeded in the building and delivering our first HPC high performance computing ready quantum computers. So we have fabricated one machine, which is actually here in the center of the image, and we have delivered this machine into an industrial data center, which was not designed and done to host big quantum computers. But for them, it took us like, it was easy to bring the machine, plug it there, so just uh, as simple as this, and run it. So this is also due to the fact that we have worked a lot on engineering. We have developed a design which is upgradable because we work with modular, uh, modular blocks that are all connected by optical fibers and with semiconductors. A quite low energy consumptions, less than three kilowatts. If we compare with the big deletion fridges that you can find on the market, actually it's much more energy efficient in terms of um, in in, a, in order to help customers to to actually uh, uh, not spend thousands of dollars in euros in a, in energy um, in energy. So this first delivery was done at OVH Cloud, which is actually a French. Um, data center provider in France, in Europe, and was done in October 2023. So we have succeeded this first step, and we are actually already running and working to deliver the next customers, next data center customers. So this is all for Candela. Thank you very much for, for your attention. I will be pleased to have uh, some interaction. Don't hesitate to contact us. And also, please be aware that we will be at Photonic West. So We'll be happy to have a discussion and a chat or have a coffee and our booth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hansa. Who will be a Photonist West with Valeria and me? Great. Many, many people. Of course, CLIA has to be a Photonist West because otherwise I would cancel it. We have a few questions for you, Valeria, and thank you very much for that. The first question goes all the way to Seattle area, Castor Optics. Kathy Vedette, tell us what's on your mind. Hi, I actually do not have a question. It just went automatically when I raised my hand because I will be at Photonics West. So, but thank you for the shout out. Tell us in one sentence, what does Captor Optics do and what brought you to this meeting? Yeah, so I'm here to learn essentially what quantum computer is doing and the role of photonics and probably fiber optics components, how we can help you with, uh, with this development. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathy. Fiber components from, from Castor Optics raising the hand every time she's asked. Let's go to Alpine Research Optics. Kestutis uh, Juskevicius, you have something in mind. Share it with us. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, all this quantum computer looks, looks great. Could you could you elaborate on, on, let's say, top three problems you have to build these computers, rather technical or, or fundamental? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Many, many challenges in front of us. So just brief question, brief answer, and hope we will have an opportunity to discuss further later. Losses. Actually, photons are very robust and resilient to noise. The main problem with decorrence, which is the main advantage of photons compared to other platforms like ions or, or electrons. The main problem with photons is you can lose them very easily so it can be absorbed it can be scattered by the by the different components so we have to work a lot of this so transmission is a key to develop useful and efficient systems this is also why the fact that we have super efficient single photon sources it's a main advantage of candela um, and then 
the the other key uh, development that we are running where we are investing a lot of efforts is how to fabricate fast modules because we need to implement feed forward we need to implement fast uh, actions on the chips on the photonic integrated circuits on modulators on demultiplexers and we are fighting with we are competing with speed of light so we need to have devices running at gigahertz Thank you right. very much for that, Valerian. Uh, this is half of the optica question. This is what you can, what others can do for you. What can you do for others? Quandela, you presented today. You have a platform ready with some qubits available. How the people, the community, how can they access this computing power? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. So why I I, took, I made the choice to present this because I want to convince people that it's already available for people to to deploy to test and to run a uh, test on how to make some calculations with photons. Uh, I didn't have time to, to go further into the details about the different applications, but for example, it's possible to run some quantum machine learning algorithm um, on our platform. It's also possible to develop some chemistry algorithm on our platform, uh, quantum random number generation for encryption, cybersecurity, many applications that are available. Um, so don't hesitate to connect and, and see all the different applications you have that are proposed. A, you have made a difference in the efficient single photon sources with quantum dots. This is a meeting which we want to showcase the technology of our members. So I'm going to introduce you to somebody who you already know, but this is a person who we have been quite amazed at Optica. They are commercializing the quantum dot technology of NIST. This company is Icarus Quantum, and it's happening today by Pulan Imani. Pulan, thank you very much for being with us today. You have one slide to showcase today after Quantela. Tell us, what do you do, and how can others help you? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for the intro and for the invite. This is truly a pleasure to speak at an Optica event and as a corporate member now. So yeah, I'm going to tell you about Icarus Quantum and we're a spin out from NIST um, here in beautiful Boulder, Colorado. And we're making entangled photons, efficient entangled photons, and we're aiming at scalable quantum networking. So the technology that we're using is same as what Quandela and Valerian use, um, three, five quantum dots. And these platforms, as Valerian said, they year after year shown the highest efficiency in single photon generation. And now we're using these to generate entangle photons efficiently and on demand. And what we're looking at first is the cybersecurity that quantum networks bring. And then the holy grail of this technology is going to be connecting quantum computers in a modular way to each other and then form distributed quantum computing. Um, we have some sponsors, mostly from the U.S. government, um, the Air Force, Space Force, NASA, and NIST. And we have some academic partners. Um, and last but not least, I do want to emphasize that in Colorado, there's been a lot of quantum activities going on in past few decades. And now Colorado was just picked as one of the two quantum tech hubs in the U.S. by the Department of Commerce. And... That is, we have this uh, consortium here, Elevate Quantum, and the excitement about quantum in the region is only going to get bigger and bigger. So we thank love, you. We love Colorado. Last year, Optica had our quantum 2.0 conference there. And we have many, many companies in Colorado that are doing great job, like especially, for example, called Quanta. Thank you very much, Icarus Quantum, for joining. And I'm coming to Colorado very soon to see you. But let's continue. Today, we have many interesting companies in the room who are looking forward to start new cooperations. And the next one is a company that brought quantum to the consumer market. If you went to the Mobile World Congress last year. You could see a chip from ID Quantique. Uh, we wanted to understand what they do in the field of quantum computing. So uh, today with us, Felix Gutierrez is telling us a bit about IDQ in quantum computing. Great. So thank you very much, Jose. I, can't, I hope you can hear me well. It's a Not real clear. pleasure. Yeah, perfect. So it's a real pleasure to be here. Our, I'm really happy we joined uh, the Optica as a corporate member, it's giving us great opportunity to connect with, with you. So I want to tell you about what we do. I mean, so one of the things we do at IDQ is to enable 
quantum connectivity with photons. And uh, we've been focused a lot since uh, 22 years in delivering single photon detectors. Um, and uh, we've been uh, on the SNSPD uh, aspect of things since 2017. So our focus is really on proven high performance. Of course, innovation, we have to innovate and innovate with a lot. Uh, short lead times, high quality and reliability. Um, so a bit more about uh, some of the technology itself. In quantum computing, one of the very important aspects you need from the single photo photon detection part is photon number resolution. And we've been uh, quite innovative on that field and we've been delivering some of these since 2021. We have a device that can reach very high end photon efficiency with a single coaxial line. So it's also efficient in terms of uh, the, you know, using the number of uh, spots you have in a cryostat for SNSPDs. Uh, they can also reach very high detection rates, work with the CW regime or pulse regime, working at uh, the you know, very relevant uh, wavelengths, 1550, 920 for quantum dots. And uh, you know, this line of uh, detectors is continuously evolving. Just to finish off, I wanna uh, say that uh, we're going to be launching this year or shipping this year a fully uh, compact rack mounted system with lots of, you know, fully autonomous operation. We call it the pro system because it's really for the, the most professional uh, applications. So we're quite happy to be uh, telling you that today. And then, uh, you know, to the questions, uh, what you can do for us. So we want to partner with you. We want to understand what are the system features and detection features that will be leading to meaningful R&D opportunities, but also business for you. Okay, so um, this ability to talk to you is very precious. We want to be get, getting the best out of it for both directions. Uh -huh. And in the other sense, uh, in the other direction, so uh, what we can do for you is to discuss about scaling together, both from the technology point of view and operational point of view, which is where the field is going. And that's, uh, you know, we'd be very happy to engage in discussion along those lines with, uh, with uh, all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Felix. Let me remind everyone watching live in Zoom and live in YouTube, if you want to get in touch with any of the participants today, because you can address any of their needs, all you have to do is send us an email, jpoth.optical.org, and we'll make the introduction for you. This meeting is about creating business. The next person, do you have a question, right? Clea Dimitri, all the way from Hamamatsu Photonics. Uh, tell us the floor and the attention of everyone is yours. You have a question from Valerian, I think. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, it's kind of connected to my slide, but I, I know uh, Valerian kind of brought up a really good point about, uh, you know, the losses. So I was kind of curious if he has any insights of, like, as you design these uh, systems to be larger, larger, like, how can you kind of try to mitigate those losses across all the components? Um, that was kind of my question. Yes, they go to the slide and we'll address the question. Awesome. Okay, great. So let me just uh, quickly share my Remember? screen here. Corporate members always have access to share one slide at our industry events. Thank you very much, Hamamatsu, for being one of our oldest members. Sure. Yeah, so uh, the tagline of Hamamatsu, and I think the direction we're trying to go into, is we're trying to help people seamlessly build these quantum computers. Uh, so, you know, what are our current capabilities? You know, today we have a lot of um, detector and imaging options uh, to really help people identify optimal solutions as they build these uh, computers. Um, some things that people may not know is we actually have a rapid design group. Um, they basically can rapidly develop prototypes with some of our solutions to make them more easier to interface with your um, the systems you may be making. And we've actually shown some really nice success with our cameras recently on this. Um, we're also vertically integrated, which can help us think of any custom solutions that you guys may need in the future. Uh, and the challenges I, I kind of put here, they're kind of pretty big ones that, you know, I think how much is involved, but of course, you know, I think the whole industry may need to tackle this. I think the first one is like, what's, you know, there's a bit of uncertainty of what new so solutions will be needed and when, as you're trying to go to the scalable universal fault tolerant quantum computer. Another big one is the, what is good enough, um, especially for systems design. I picked on picks here a little bit because it's a hot topic, um, but you know, that's uh, an expensive high volume. I know there's some pick players, so it may not be a challenge by the end of it, but you know, definitely just thinking of return on investment um, for these manufacturers and, and the reliability as well. So, you know, how, you know, kind of what is needed and what, what aspects of the computers. Um, and then lastly, I think this is a big one. And I think um, Valorant from Quandela really hit on it is like 
all these solutions today and in the past were really developed in isolations of each other. But is there any ways moving forward that we can consider them um, to help um, to help really these uh, systems engineers build better systems as they scale. So, you know, is there any way these solutions can start talking to each other um, so we can basically make a, a more seamless and um, sort of reduce a lot of the engineering challenges that people face. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Clea. Could you repeat your, your question for Valerian regarding the losses? Sure, yeah. So uh, I think I think Valerian really touched on this. So this last challenge here, um, you know, I was just kind of curious, uh, you know, Valerian, like how are you kind of um, tackling uh, this uh, sort of challenge of losses, especially across components? Um, and, you know, is it, you know, what solutions do you potentially see um, potentially happening or what is something you would like to see from the community or something that, you know, would help you kind of address that more head on? Too clear uh, and very nice uh, introduction actually. Um, so basically, it's it's a general uh, problem because for for the end to end efficiencies given by by the transmission from every every uh, connections. Uh, now we are not in a maturity where it's possible to have everything a monolithic uh, device because it's not scalable and we need to build. On a, on a devices that are modular connected with fibers uh, and with also with with modulators as well uh, I see that because you can provide modulators uh, now uh, the fact that I see that there is kind of trade-off between speed and 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 transmission of modulators but to build a full term on quantum computers is no doubt that we will need both actually. Valerian, uh -huh. we started with you at the success story of the photonics, and now we move to another success story. This company, part of Optica, has impressed us because they talk about spin qubits with a very big vision on scalability. Christine Bonnet, thank you very much for being part of this meeting today. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to Photonic Inc. Hi. Um, can you see my screen? I'm going to try to put presenter mode on. Is that Crystal good? Clear. Yes. <laughs> Great. Lovely. Hi everyone, I'm Christine Boone. Um, today I'm gonna introduce Photonic uh, Inc. And I'm gonna talk about how we use photonics as well as uh, silicon spins to build our quantum computer. So to kind of get us started, just to give everybody a little context for the quantum computing industry in general, we're kind of in this predominant design era. So there's a bunch of different quantum computers. There's a bunch of different ways to build a quantum computer pretty much need something that can hold some superposition and you need something that you can entangle different pieces together. So that's, those are the fundamentals for what you need to kind of start building a quantum computer off of that. Um, with other types of technology, we enter an era where we kind of see dominant designs emerge. This is not where we're at. We're, we're mostly just kind of watching the scene and seeing how things kind of progress. But <laughs> for example, here with cell phones, um, there's a bunch of different ways. I don't know how many flip phones are these big blocky ones everybody had, but um, eventually we kind of got to the iPhone and then ever since then, every kind of cell phone looks the same. So just to kind of give us a general idea of where we're at with the industry, we're in this pre-dominant design era, um, but we are closely approaching this kind of dominant design uh, emergence. <coughs> so what we do at Photonic Inc, um, we're a company that's based out of Canada uh, on the West Coast and um, we're using this interface between silicon spin and these silicon photonics. So our silicon spins, the, the spin of, of these atoms is holding the, the quantum state. And then we're having um, telecom wavelength photons interacting with our system. So in this way, we can build a distributed and network quantum computer very easily and naturally um, because our silicon spins are emitting at the telecom wavelength. Um, so we get both the stability from silicon spins and the manufacturing manufacturability from silicon spins, but then we also um, get to utilize the photonics of it so that we can actually have these distributed quantum supercomputers. So just to kind of walk through this a little bit, sorry, I'm going to cough. <laughs> um, so we use something called the T center. So in each of our T centers, we actually have four qubits. So the electron is the one that's emitting the telecom wavelength. And then the, the carbons can hold the state for a very long time. 
And then we also have this additional um, hydrogen spin. So when we're looking at this, we can actually build the, the quantum network from the quantum computer. So the, the T centers are acting either as a quantum computer, like a network quantum computer, or we can actually use it to build a quantum internet out of. Um, so our technology is actually both quantum computing and quantum networking. Um, so then, yeah, we have optical switches and, and detectors, <laughs> um, but uh, we're at um, a one, about one Kelvin. So it's, it's quite cold. We do need to <laughs> have these dilution refrigerators, but um, it's not as cold as some other types of quantum computing. And then sort of longer term, as we look at this, um, it's about creating a distributed quantum computer. So we could have a bunch of different, these cryostats, a bunch of different chips that are all inter interconnected. So like each chip could have X number of qubits on it. And then by having a ton of those systems in the same room, by having all these photonic interconnects, we can scale up the system very easily. Um, and then with that said, we can also start looking at these metro scale fiber links or actually using uh, satellite links to create something like a quantum internet. So what does quantum at scale mean? And what are we kind of working towards as an industry? So um, generally quantum computing, as many of you have heard probably in the past and also today, um, it, there is this potential to address some of these, these global issues, right? So, so there's this potential and it's kind of like where we were at when a digital computer took up an entire room. We don't exactly, we couldn't really predict that Facebook was gonna fall out of it, but um, all of these applications to the, to the internet and to digital computing um, couldn't really be foreseen. So we're all kind of in this industry building these quantum computers and, and really excited to see how they're gonna be used. And I think that's also a large part of why all these quantum computing companies are here today is that we're all looking for partners, right? We're all trying to understand how would you use a quantum computer and how, how can we start looking at developing these, these algorithms and these applications. Um, and then quantum networks, they can connect and scale quantum supercomputers and then also enable other types of applications and then generally working with quantum workloads. So with our technology, we're scalable. Um, silicon is very manufacturable. It's, it's very easy to um, make more qubits, put more qubits on a chip. And then we can also have this distributed network of quantum computers that are all interconnected with these telecom wavelength photons. And then the other thing that's great too is because of the telecom net or photons and the connectivity that we can set up, we can also look at uh, more efficient quantum error correction codes. So because quantum systems are intrinsically error prone, um, you need something called quantum error correction. And because of the way our system is set up, we can actually start using these really efficient error correction codes. Anyways, that's all. <laughs> Any questions? Oh. Thank you so much, Kristen. That was great. And actually, uh, I I may I start with with one thing, one question. So uh, I would get a little bit more specific. What in terms of like, what you said, you are looking for partners and and uh, basically getting involved with the ecosystem. What is what is what are the kind of partners? What what sort of photonic components? Is it the manufacturers? What exactly are you looking for? Honestly, all of the above. I think. Um... Uh, there's a ton of experts in our company in photonics. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. My PhD was in quantum error diagnostics, so I can talk about that all day. But um, I do think we're looking for partners generally to also look at algorithm development, um, but but also to understand more efficient ways of of working with our photonics side as well. Okay, and El, that that's that's a good point you mentioned the algorithm development, which actually. Uh, brings me to to our our next speaker, Inflection. So many of you, uh, uh, many of you know uh, Inflection as being a, a quantum computing company, but they have a diverse set of products, um, and uh, one of them is actually the algorithm. So I, uh, Peter Noel from uh, Quantum is uh, from, from Inflection is here. Peter, why don't you sh start sharing your 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 slide? Yeah, and, and explain more. Thank you. Yeah, um, great to be here. Great to uh, to meet everyone. Um, my name is Peter Knoll. I'm uh, from Inflection, from the uh, Chicago office. So, a uh, quick background on Inflection. Inflection started in 2007 as Cold Quanta. So you may know us by that name. 
uh, by Professor Dana Anderson at the University of Colorado Boulder. And now we've grown to have offices in Boulder, Austin, Texas, Chicago, Madison, Wisconsin, Melbourne, Australia, and Oxford, UK. So in short, uh, what we like to say is that we do is we shoot lasers at atoms. So we we uh, do a, a wide range of the quantum ecosystem type products, two of which are shown here. I uh, had to keep it short today and, and focused. Uh, so we, we do everything from quantum computing. You see our, our quantum computer uh, called Hilbert there uh, to quantum sensing, quantum RF, quantum atomic clocks. And uh, we recently launched in December publicly our quantum matter machine, Octant, uh, where you can, can make Bose-Einstein condensates uh, over the cloud. So uh, our technology isn't, isn't a photonic quantum computer per se, but it is a neutral atom quantum computer that depends uh, a lot on lasers and uh, on photonics because of that. So it's all based around this this core technology of glass vacuum cells. So that's that's what Hilbert's uh, based on. We think this approach is is highly scalable. Uh, and I think there, there's more evidence of that uh, as each month goes by in the industry. Uh, neutral atoms are all identical by nature. So uh, it's it's that's one fewer imperfection uh, as, as we scale up there and also no cryogenics, just lasers. So um, while the lasers do have their advantages, that's one of the challenges we're facing today and looking for solutions is improved laser quality um, as well as laser quantity. So we we like to say now that we're we're taking quantum out of the lab and into production. We recently announced a uh, plans to build manufacturing capability in the state of Texas. So uh, we're looking to to build not just one quantum computer or quantum optical clock here, uh, but hundreds and thousands in the coming years. So it's a it's a priority for us to invest in laser technology that's more reliable, out of the box works and is uh, is scalable. So um, and just I, I know today is is mostly focused on quantum computing, but just to mention our atomic clock ticker, which is available for pre-order. Um, ticker Prime is is the model right now that gives hydrogen maser-like performance uh, and is rack mountable and somewhat ruggedized. Uh, but as we go forward, it, our photonics roadmap is going to be very important to get the uh, size, weight, and power down to chip scale, uh, reduced to pick size. You can see future plans for, for ticker blades. So uh, we're looking for for ways to advance that roadmap. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, drop them in the chat or, or uh, speak up. Uh, thank you so much, Peter. And <clears throat> and uh, again, the, the question is what you can do for the industry and what industry can do for you. Yeah, so uh, what we can do for industry, we, we have this, this broad portfolio of these quantum technologies. So I think those are, are out of the box, ready to use. Uh, for example, with Ticker, we we believe there, there are applications there to unlock almost new markets with applications in data centers. So instead of having to to build a new data, data center or uh, lay more fiber to, to increase the throughput of a data center, we think these clocks can be integrated locally into the data centers to increase mm -hmm. uh, throughput. So it could be interesting. Yeah, interesting. So... Uh, so sorry um so that's that's an example of what we can do on the clock side hilbert's uh, a little uh less far along than, than ticker in the product life cycle but we have plans to similarly produce not just uh one one version of hilbert but uh several uh hundreds hopefully in the future um and as far as what what industry can do for us, we, like I said, just uh, improved laser quality and uh, reduced size, weight and power, as well as uh, improved quantity, because you can only get your hands on, on so many of these at the moment. All right. And I see questions are coming up through uh, through the chat. I have a question for uh, for Christine uh, from Cared Stock Pro from Spyro Quantum. Cared, why don't you uh, put uh, put your camera on and ask uh christine the question that you you posted here uh
Uh, well, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I am on my phone. Uh, apparently, uh, it cannot open the camera. But um, um, yeah. So my question is: uh, I think it was a uh, thanks for the presentation. It was. Uh, uh, really nice, and uh, it seems that uh, the prospect of your technology is amazing. Um, it was not very clear from your presentation how far you are with the technology, actually. So, 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 what have you um, demonstrated uh, now? I mean, um, um, what can you do with this color center, uh, um, and how far are you from? Uh, do you have any publications or do you have any proof of concept of your technology? Yeah, I can I can definitely comment on that uh, to a certain extent. I don't want to, I'm not supposed to talk about roadmap publicly, but um, yeah, so we had a nature paper two years ago demonstrating fidelity numbers and, and things like that for the silicon spin and the integrated photonics. Um, since then, we've published general papers on how the system is being developed um, but we aren't publishing at this exact moment on on where we're at um, experimentally, but uh, that will be coming shortly. Okay. Sorry, that's not a very good answer. But <laughs> well, no. Christian, we are we are all friends in here. I know you said yeah. you don't want to share publicly, but. People, people would like to know. I uh, so maybe they can reach out to you and like have discussions. Yeah, so this is this is this is what what we do. We facilitate for people to for the within the ecosystem to get have have private conversations. But yeah, absolutely, will and and feel free to that. contact me for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, all right. Thank you. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, uh, Peter in his talk he mentioned the neutral atoms and the need for for lasers. That that uh, and uh, our next speaker. Uh, is actually the, the makers of the these high performance uh, lasers, uh, Siamak Dodras from Toptica. Uh, Siamak, uh, the floor is your, all yours. Oh. <clears throat> Thanks very much, uh, Puya, for the introduction. Uh, Siamak Dodras with Toptica, and I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Um, All right, uh, so uh, as we all know, uh, lasers are uh, pretty much the key uh, enabling technologies for quantum computing. And currently many laser industries are using all sorts of technologies to uh, meet the existing uh, requirements of quantum uh, computing development. For example, at Toptica, uh, we develop a broad portfolio of lasers, including uh, tunable diode lasers that amplifier, uh, frequency converted lasers, uh, fiber lasers that amplifiers, Raman fiber lasers, frequency cones, and laser rack systems for uh, the modular integration of all these lasers in a smaller footprint. Uh, but we, uh, and we, and we take the pride to uh, cover the broadest range of wavelengths and powers, as you can see on this graph, uh, uh, in low noise lasers, uh, enabling the development of quantum computers based on trapped ions, neutral atoms, uh, photonic qubits, spin qubits, and so on. Uh, however, as the number of qubits in these systems uh, start to scale up, scalability of the required hardware, including the lasers, become a big challenge. And a solution that intuitively looks uh, promising to <laughs> in implementing such qubit uh, modalities on uh, is, is implementing such uh, modalities on uh, integrated photonics. And the importance of this strategic shift is already recognized by several different quantum computing companies. Uh, exploring the integrated photonic platforms potentially complemented by lasers, uh, on-chip lasers actually. Uh, however, as we all know, this is a very, very uh, um, uh, these are very, very early stage technologies, and there is a long way to go to achieve uh, uh, full blown maturity of such complex qubit platforms. Uh, and as we navigate this new horizon of laser company, uh, we realize that collaboration with the quantum industry uh, is a key step towards the quantum uh, computers based on integrated photonics. And we look forward to working with all folks here uh, to get to that promised land. Thank you. Thank, 
thank you thank you so much Yomek. and and uh i mean the photonic integration would would require the manufacturing and the foundry so i i would like to bring our uh, next speaker kavita Budaraja from advanced microfoundry all the way from singapore to here to to talk about what they can do for the industry and Siamak will will get back to you to ask the optical question as well hello everyone hi this is kavita and thank you for this opportunity it's Great to meet everyone on this wonderful platform provided uh, by Optica. Uh, I, I guess uh, the previous presenter has to unshare for me to share. It says I cannot share the screen. All right, uh, it should be okay now. Uh, so I come from the sunny land of uh, Singapore where I was just telling uh, optical and warm should come visit us sometime. Uh, so uh, I'm. Uh, I represent AMF. Uh, I can't see your presentation. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Just uh, one. Okay. No problem. Try unsharing and resharing it. Oh, we might have lose. Oh, uh, we might have lose Kavita because I saw her drop off. Uh, well, in the meantime, while she is trying to to get that connected, see, I'm like the the, the the question for you for you is you you mentioned the challenges at, at early stage of photonic integration. Well, what is it? What is it exactly that that you you need from? Uh, oh, here, here, here's uh, Kavita is back. All right, um, Kavita, we can see your uh, your presentation you can now. See Go my ahead. Screen. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, AMF is a silicon photonic specialty foundry. We are based in Singapore, and uh, our main technology is uh, silicon photonics wafer manufacturing services, and we do this at very large volumes currently for our communication customers. And we're hopeful that like in the next few years, we would we can partner with some of you to also transition you into volume manufacturing for quantum computing. Um, everything that we do is done in our fab in Singapore. It's a 90 nanometer technology node. For us, uh, uh, for all the technology that we offer to our customers, um, our main objective is to make sure that uh, everything that we develop is is catered for their specific applications. So in the space of quantum computing, uh, we're serving a customer base in the bandwidth from 600 nanometers to 1.7 micrometer. And for this bandwidth, uh, we are using technology platforms or material platforms of uh, SOI, silicon nitride on SOI and silicon nitride on silicon. And two of these platforms, we offer them in an MPW service and the good news is uh, we offer these uh, every month. So you can join them, sample the platforms and partner with us. At the same time, uh, as it was mentioned by several speakers in the past, we understand the importance of partnering. So we had partnered with Asanta Photonics and Professor Joyce Poon, where we are offering a visible silicon nitride platform also in an MPW format. If you're interested, please reach out to me. So uh, in developing these technology platforms, as I mentioned, we have listened to our customers and one of the uh, device requirements that we get from them is uh, ultra low, low, low coupling loss, high extension ratio phase shifters, uh, size of the devices that we offer in the PDK low loss packaging. And our latest PDK 4.0 addresses most of these challenges. Uh, we are in the process of launching a new low loss platform, hopefully where we could reach less than 0.1 dB per centimeter propagation loss on C-band. Uh, and then the rest of the platform is suitable as it is, like several of our MPW customers use it for quantum computing already using our high-speed modulators, uh, compact photo detectors, single photon PDs and many more devices. We have more than 100 devices. And all these devices are, are made available through all our EDA vendors shown here. 
So in essence, we have a technology platforms and we have all the devices ready. Uh, they're not perfect. They, re they require a lot of improvement, I understand. But that's where we'd like to partner with you guys to take it to the next level. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Kavita. And actually, uh, in, in 2025, Optica will organize and uh, will we'll have an industry summit it, that will be an in-person event hosted by AMF in Singapore. So people get to see firsthand. I mean, that they should see it earlier than 2025. No, please don't wait till then to to get in touch with AMF, but you'll see firsthand uh, the operations there. And uh, we are really impressed, and I'm sure you all will be very much impressed with what AMF is, is accomplishing. Now, back to you, Siamak, like just a quick question. Uh, what exactly, what uh, particularly, uh, what kind of partner and interaction are you looking for? It's just just uh, a little bit more specific uh, on, on what, what is it that is keeping you awake at night? Okay. Uh, so, I think um, it's... Uh, I, I, the question was for Siamak, uh, uh, Kavita. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's important to understand the, um, somehow a consensus of the uh, what is really needed in, in the quantum industry uh, in terms of lasers. And I know that many, many quantum industries, especially on the sensor side, they're very much looking into uh, compact uh, platforms, not necessarily uh, integrated photonics based, uh, somehow more compactized than the uh, tabletop systems. This can be, for example, the lasers that are a uh, sister company, uh, uh, Eagle Yard Photonics, uh, Toptica Eagle Yard is, is building uh, on in chip integrated, uh, sorry, not chip integrated, it's mini ECDLs uh, in a 14 pin butterfly package, which is much smaller than tabletop lasers. And then that can readily be used in uh, in, in sensors, for example, in atomic clock. We are working on uh, smaller versions of those, which is more compact and uh, more uh, uh, modular in terms of uh, getting uh, heterogeneous integrated with other platforms if there is any uh, system downstream of lasers. But, and Kavita, uh, is like that I something, said, sorry to interrupt, is that something that, that you, AMF can help Toptica with? Like the heterogeneous integration and within your your uh, your platform, it is absolutely. It's one of our top focus areas. So uh, I guess I'd connect with uh, them and and have a chat on this. Absolutely, well, and, that, and that, of course, that, go ahead. This is something that this is something that the you know there are, there's many hands in 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 some some uh, integration like that. Uh, of course, the the main integration should be done or should be somehow affected by a quantum integrator because that is a something that's something that is uh, going to address a quantum application we are not a uh, quantum company we are a quantum enabler company we are a laser company and we listen to quantum builders to see what they need and we build the lasers required for that but that like i said in the future it would need a heterogeneous integration and uh for this kind of uh, integrations, we might work with many different uh, uh, folks. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think we are in the same boat. Uh, we are also uh, we don't make on any products, but we are a service provider. But this is a requirement that I do hear regularly to recommend uh, laser sources or or partners who can who can integrate this. So I think it's uh, it's worthwhile having a discussion. Yes. Wonderful. Thank, thank you, thank you both uh, for for the conversation. And with that, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, our. Uh, sorry, is there was there a question in the room? I I think I missed it. All right. If not, then I would like to introduce our next speaker, all the way from the United Kingdom, Ajik and Max and Sim. They use hybrid integrated photonics for practical applications of quantum. So, Max Sim, with that, the floor and the attention of everyone is yours. Hi, good uh, morning, good day, good uh, good uh, late afternoon, I suppose. So um, thanks very much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. And we've recently joined Optica and straight away uh, we got ourselves uh, into the deep uh, of the community. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit on what we are doing in tonic information processing, quantum computing. And in particular, we do everything uh, based on optics. So... Uh, 
Um, we're based, actually, our headquarters are in the heart of the UK in Sheffield. We have office in London. Um, so we built Photonic Quantum Computer and net and Computers Networking Systems uh, with the aim of uh, bringing out like real life uh, applications today. And the heart of that is two things, is determinism uh, and generation and low loss uh, photonic integrated circuits and devices that we built out of them. So uh, we started a couple of years ago, uh, we've grown to a nice size team, and we're already partnering with um, global leaders in, uh, in different sectors, uh, but primarily that's defense security oriented, um, was already delivering particular applications to them. So we're involved in quite a few projects. Um, so that includes Royal Navy, British Telecom, National Quantum Computing Center in the UK, um, won a bunch of awards uh, on our way, uh, and uh, um, with that, I would like to say a few words about kind of our pedigree where we started. Is uh, we already talked a little bit about uh, photon sources and the fact that they are absolutely critical for uh, operation, and you know it's on demand. Uh, but what, what we're also doing is we completely put them in a simple, you know, rack mounted boxes. It's the first solution to bring in that uh, turnkey operation on its own. Uh, and it's ready uh, and it's be, being actually shipped uh, to a couple of customers. So again, we kind of skip this, but it means that we have really, really good uh, photons and the you know best available technology today uh, in terms of manufacturability and scaled uh, production is 3.5s uh, because it also requires reasonably low temperature, almost invisible cryogenics that we can put on it. And um, I think one of the questions that it was kind of glossed over in uh, before, but it's the wavelengths and that it makes uh, it's really important uh, because we have different platforms available to us where we operate. So there are well, classic quantum dots, which are in the near infrared, but we also uh, have the ability to produce really high quality uh, devices in telecom wavelengths which means that we can build in the networking devices and really leverage lots of the photonic integrated technology that's available for just normal digital telecoms and interface uh, seamlessly into this ecosystem and also in a, uh, from the application perspective in that infrastructure. So uh, that's uh, one of the uh, you know key uh, interesting things that we're doing. And with that, uh, I would like to introduce you to our first um, quantum computer that we are unveiling later this year, but as a little preview, it's called Artemis. Uh, it's the completely field deployable platform that you can take in a data center, actually outside of the data center as well. Um, so we use hybrid photonic integrated technology. That is, we try to combine different um, uh, photonic uh, components and materials to maximize the efficiency and well, minimize losses. The, uh, you know, Photonics is a game of losses, right? So it's already been pointed out earlier today. So um, we're shipping actually next year, uh, early next year. If you order today, you might get one of these systems uh, if you'll be fast enough. But um, the number, the, the the size of the circuit depends on you know, kind of configuration you're looking at, but we're going up to 32 by 32 implementations. Actually, some of the Optica members help us build them. So you see the, the names below, Ligantech uh, in particular, um, so uh, I guess the reason why determinism really matters for uh, photonics is the dramatic reduction in component size. And this is where we're heading with this because you can reach utility much, much faster with a smaller number of components and actually smaller systems, uh, which are doing some practical applications on. Um, and I'd like to touch on a couple of these things that we're doing. So in terms of like what we're doing, what we're looking for as well. I mean, uh, so we are building quantum computing systems and applications for them. So uh, we can supply you with systems, with components such as foreign resources for whatever research you're doing. So uh, we're also looking into the application space and in particular, we're interested in how we can leverage more near term uh, solutions there. But we're very much open to also collaborative research uh, as well as you know, improving the efficiency and the scale uh, and the, you know, the size of the systems that, that we make. A um, few things on ours, but uh, I think you, you'll see these people appearing in different areas within Optica. So uh, it's not just going to be uh, one face. So um, 
please do, if you find them, have a chat. And some of us might be uh, actually at the Photonics West. So it would be great to meet whoever uh, is there as well. And please do get in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much for a great presentation. Thank you for all your support for, for many years. It is great to have you at Optica. For you is the Optica question. What can you do for others? What others can do for you? A couple of challenges you still should address in the coming year. So, uh, of course, we I think the major challenges remain in uh, uh, well, photonic integration uh, or complex integration of different materials together. So on top of the efficiency of obviously devices and losses per uh, say length of the uh, of the device, um, so those are kind of major uh, research programs that uh, we are already involved in uh, and and looking to to develop. So that's probably from the tech perspective is one of the biggest uh, biggest challenges out there is uh, is actually making sure that we hit the, the right specs because. Still, it's very, very demanding in terms of losses, in terms of... Thank uh, you, Sunil. <laughs> many, many people actually would like to help you, but we have one question in the room coming from the company OE Waves. OE Waves is one of our members in, in, in Microwave Photonics. Ori, uh, welcome to the meeting. What's on your mind? So, yeah, I was we've got a couple of things that I'm wondering about. One is uh, in your in your photonic computer, do you run into issues with laser stability? Is uh, short term or long term stability more of an issue for you in terms of um, noise? Um, and uh, of course, long term survivability of the laser is, a sure, is an issue, but uh, just thinking about the noise right now. Uh, and, uh, and then also another question is, um, uh, other applications for the fundamental technology that you're developing are there other things that uh, could be that it could be used for other than quantum computing well I, I'll, I'll address the stability because that's a, a quick one uh, i think the short term stability is uh, is the hardest to 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 deal with i mean long term drifts you can you can offset them uh, there's uh, some reasonably easy way to do this uh, so sh short term noises is more problematic uh, for i mean we use some lasers inside uh, and that is uh, which we don't make. Uh, but, uh, some some of the partners uh, who make them are in this call I've seen. Um, so in terms of applications, that's a blessing and a, and a curse at the same time because you have uh, you know set of applications that go from quantum metrology and you know doing things like cancer diagnostics with uh, with microscopy. All the way into like quantum internet generating like large entanglement states, uh, uh, and uh, you know even QQD space based communication. So we, we have some play in those areas, um, but that creates an, an extra uh, an extra challenge uh, in general for uh, to be honest, just specific to us, but in general in quantum market. That's where it's heading, and yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Max. Stay with me because I'm coming to you for a bit, uh, but uh, now I would like to address a couple of challenges in supply chain. We're going to go to a beautiful city, beautiful city in the Netherlands, Delft. And we had there Aitan Oxenberg talking about single photon detection, single quantum. Tell us what you can do for others, what others can do for you. The floor is yours. I thank you for the introduction and it's uh, very nice to be here. Um, so my name is Eitan Oxenberg. I'm part of the research team here in Signal Quantum. And at Signal Quantum, we make uh, basically super uh, single photon detection solution based on superconducting nanowires. Uh, we've been doing that for more than 10 years now, starting uh, as a spin-off out of Delft uh, University. And as you can see by the spec sheet here, we're really providing state-of-the-art solutions um, on system detection efficiency, but also temporal solution in noise or dark, dark counts and a very wide range of wavelengths. Um, and recently, we've also introduced some customer-inspired solution. This is something we like to do. We like to engage with our customers, understand what they want, and then make it. Uh, so you can see here the fully rack-mountable solution or the interleave detector that can provide Ultra high count weight for quantum communication, for example, and and photo number uh, resolution capabilities that are important to some quantum uh, computing platforms. Uh, but this is all pretty standard, and you can find all of this online pretty easily in our website. 
But I'm here specifically from the research department because we're really trying uh, to pay more attention to the quantum computing market. Um, and we're trying to engage with the companies, understand whether their photon detection needs basically so that we can provide their optimal solutions now, but also in two, five and 10 years so we want to align sort of our, our roadmaps together so that we can offer the best solutions also uh, going forward. Of the question for you, what can you do for the others, what others can do for you? Yes, so obviously as, as you know, providers of these uh, superconductor-based uh, solutions, we're looking for uh, people who are interested in incorporating these type of detectors, these type of specs, and we want to cooperate with them in order to, you know, address all, all the all the challenges that were already uh, talked about as- Beautiful, beautiful item. Let's go to Max. Max, you have these yeah. photon, single photon nanowire detectors, uh, possibly on chip. What would you need single quantum to do for you to be able to incorporate, integrate those? Well, we probably need to sit down and talk a little bit more in detail on how exactly we're going to do. Um, there's a there's a process we are uh, looking to develop uh, in terms of like different chip integration in the coming years. So I think it will be a good time. And uh, I believe the some of our technical teams might be talking on the opportunity, but uh, don't hold me accountable for that. So uh, I, we all know that the, what made Psy Quantum special that was that they managed to integrate the nanowire detectors on chip. And now Single Quantum is coming here to offer this to all the companies in the quantum, in the photon enabled quantum computing domain. So Eitan, be prepared because there will be many introductions after this meeting. Max, back to you. Tell me about one or two challenges on laser diodes. Uh, you mean on our, our frozen Language, sources? Power, yes. No, no, laser diodes. Yeah. Is... Uh, so the, uh, the, actually for us, we uh, prefer not to use them exactly because they are so challenging. So we still need like proper lasers. Uh, but if somebody can come up with a good, really sharp uh, laser diode, they can do something like uh, a sub picosecond or maybe five, 10 picoseconds. Uh, you know, there's a really, really, really interesting conversation for us to be had. Let's see how close we can get with the people in Optica. Let's go all the way to Finland, to Tampere, minus 18 degrees C. Please allow me not to say it in Fahrenheit. Kale, thank you very much for being with us. Tell us uh, what you can do for Max and the rest and what they can do for you. Hi. Absolutely. So um, you should be seeing my screen shortly. It's frozen. Now. No, now, here. yes. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm executive director at Mosulite and also leading the quantum business. Also, actually, I'm a, I'm a chair of uh, of enabling technologies at QADC. So, working with a lot of uh, a lot of US companies on that. Um, about a little bit about Mosulite. So, we are a public listed company uh, that was founded in the year 2000. And we are fully vertically integrated. So we start with the substrate, we build the lasers, and on the medical side, we build uh, devices that the doctors are using in the, in the operating room. So we build everything in-house. Um, we, we have a lot of tools uh, in our own fab. Uh, we can make semiconductor lasers, fiber lasers. We also have CNC machining for creating systems, electronic software, and so forth. Uh, ISO 9001 for... Um, uh, quality 14001 for environment and also 13485 for medical device manufacturing. So we take the quality and the laser, let's say, functionality really seriously. Because obviously when you are doing a cancer surgery, you cannot have the laser die in the middle of that. And I guess several of your quantum companies also feel that the laser shouldn't die, die that often as they might. So uh, we are developing in-house several technologies that fit, uh, fit quantum. We build DPR lasers. Uh, vexels, uh, fiber lasers, and with these we can cover basically all the wavelengths from UV to 2 micron plus, can also cover different line widths from kilohertz to megahertz, and powers from milliwatts to watts, and we can integrate all of these lasers into subsystems that can be integrated into quantum computers, we call it the ML6600 platform, and then that brings low noise drivers, electronics, and optics. So here's a little bit 
background why we need uh, different laser technologies. This is just a sample of uh, some of the wavelengths needed for barrier ion systems. So you can see here that depending on the wavelength that you need, uh, some technologies fit that uh, better than the others. And uh, here's a little bit more why we have chosen those specific ones. So we started in the years 2000 with the semiconductor fab. That's our bread and butter. We've added the other technologies later. Uh, but with uh, these kind of uh, DPRs, you can get to a couple of hundred kilohertz line with uh, get hundreds of milliwatts of power, uh, can amplify that further with tapered amplifier. But if you want to go more to, let's say, low noise laser operation, then Vexel is a really good solution. It cannot cover all the wavelengths needed, for example, by that barium, but it can cover several. And with this Vexel, you can get to even sub kilohertz line, which you have a really excellent beam quality, um, tens of nanometers of wavelength tunability in contrast to, let's say, DPRs, uh, what level output, which enables um, frequency conversion. Uh, and, and that's why you can reach several of these otherwise uh, challenging wavelengths. And then, then finally, there are fiber lasers. Which, uh, we also built these in-house fully from, from scratch. And uh, you can go from kilohertz to to hertz type of line which with these very low frequency and uh, intensity noise and again again high high power in in the let's say what scale and to sort of, to sort of uh, complete here are a couple of our recent measurements from from for for interview. so these are a couple of uh, couple of dprs at 935 at both of them at 150 milliwatts uh, this 935 at uh, 205 kilohertz line with and then the 760 dpr at uh, 275 kilohertz and we will be at photonics west the booth is uh, 1267 so happy to talk with you all there or also of course answer any questions that you might have here yeah we have uh, plenty of questions i will come back to you but before that the presentation by Aitan from single quantum has resonated with Icarus Quantum. Polat, all the way from Colorado. Tell us what's on your mind. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. I was wondering, I, I saw that you have a dead time of about 10 nanoseconds for your detectors. And can you go down to maybe one nanosecond while keeping the high efficiencies? Oh, uh, this is one of the, the issues, right? We want, we want to get very fast, but also maintain the high efficiency. And I must say that we've made quite a few strides in the last year uh, in that regard. What I showed in the slide, these are what we are you know, uh, providing off the shelf, but in our labs, we already have things that, that might fit your needs uh, more closely. That's awesome to know. Yeah, let's catch up. Well, uh, you have to go to Delft and see the QTech and see the facilities of single quantum. You will be amazed. Sander, the founder and me go way back and I'm quite impressed with this company. This is one of the ones to watch in our industry. Paula, uh, there's many companies here who want to talk to you. Many people are telling me you're going to be able to have a lot of business here. But we're going to go back to Max. Max, uh, you just saw the presentation from Modulite. You're looking for pulse lasers. Give us something else. Give us a bit more respect so we can see whether we can match our need. About this, um, a tunable wavelengths pulse laser uh, in either, either band. I mean, you know, I've shown you a different infrared ones. Um, with the repetition rate somewhere between, let's say, uh, anywhere between 10 gigahertz and 100 megahertz, uh, we can probably work with any of those. Um, with the pulse duration between one picosecond, maybe up to five picoseconds max. Uh, and you're talking about very low noise, uh, pulse to pulse, and really nice temporal envelopes. Ale is smiling. I think there is something in his mind. I think he wants to reach out to you. Uh, Marc André, La Liberté, bonsoir, Teraxion. Uh, you are, you are here at this meeting, also corporate member. Do you have a question for Max? Yes, I have a bunch of people talking around me, but uh, yeah. I'll try to do this quick. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious about the the challenges, how, how you work around them. Oh, uh, typically just a normal pulse laser. So uh, we either buy them or uh, we do some custom laser development. So, okay, so far you work with what you have. So well, we have different ones, right? So the um, but the, it's either like compact high subfire lasers or it's fiber based uh, pulse lasers. So they provide the stability. 
uh, and the pulse uh, qualities that we need. Do you add some uh, components around the, the setup, like optical filters and some dispersion yeah, there's, management? Yeah, there's additional elements, of course, to uh, ingest that light and uh, use. Depends on how tunable and flexible they are. So there's a kind of matching exercise between devices that we fabricated and the driving uh, electronics and photonics that we have. Uh, Max, as you can see here in this industry, we have everything that needs. And you said that you can address every band. We have also fantastic non-linear crystals from Covation. It's two are converts in the room as well. But I want to ask you a question. For many years, we have been looking at photonic integrated circuits. For many of your challenges, the next stage on quantum computing, we saw the pictures. Obviously, it's going there. Uh, we have some companies like Lionix, like Lionetech, like AMF in the room. Tell us one challenge for those. And don't say an make isolatron it, chip. We cannot make it. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, make extremely low loss uh, interfaces. All the way from beautiful, beautiful Lausanne, Michael Heiserman, Legend Tech. Tell us, what's on your mind? We we have uh, very low loss uh, uh, circuits, and uh, Max, you 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 know that. Um, and <laughs> we have. And we have also um, spot size converters that uh, that minimize the the uh, the, the loss between uh, between the, the the fiber and and the circuit. So our, our circuits we have we have different uh, thicknesses depending on wavelengths and depending on loss. You can go down below one dB per meter. So we are not talking about dB per centimeter anymore. We are talking dB per meter uh, propagation loss. Um, we we have very low loss uh, waveguides, and depending on which wavelength or what application you wanna you wanna do, you we, you can have either a very high confinement or low confinement waveguide. Um, that is all in in an extensive uh, PDK, and in that PDK also we have um, uh, we we are working on on active uh, integration, getting photo detectors and modulators on the on the chip with uh, heterogeneous uh, in integration. And um, if Max, for you, this this very low loss uh, spot size converters where you can where you can put an SMF twenty eight fiber uh, directly butt coupled to the chip. Um, there is there is some probably some of uh, customization done, but we 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 have seen very low losses um, with uh, with some of our customers here. Thank you very much, Michael. You were hosting the Quantum Industry Summit this year. All of us went to your home. I'm eternally thankful. Next year, well, 2024, we go to Bristol. The Quantum Industry Summit 2024 of Optica is at Bristol. Make sure you all go there because this is the, study, the city where I studied and it will be my pleasure to have all of you at that beautiful, beautiful city. But now we go to the next speaker. We can see the silicon nitride photonic integrated circuits work very well for quantum computer because we can buy a quantum computer today based on silicon nitride peaks. This is Lava Nikolova is here all the way from Enschede in the Netherlands to tell us about quicks, quantum, the floor and the tension. Everyone is for you. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, it's again in pro. Uh, yeah, I have to make it. Uh... It is Gorilla Glass clear. Don't worry. Looks fantastic. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, so my. Oh, name... You have to switch the displays. Go to display settings and switch the presenter view from the speaker view. There you go. You know the drill. I think you no. practice very well. <laughs> it didn't work. Uh... No, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, okay. And do you see it now? No, we, we you have to go again do the, the switching of the displays. And while you do that, I would like to say that I'm amazed by how many companies today are commercializing photonic based quantum computers in the last two years. It's fantastic. Tell us from NSGD, Quicks Quantum. 
Yeah, okay, I will do it like this then, because otherwise uh, it doesn't work. Is it okay for everyone? Of course, yes, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> okay, sorry for this, sorry for this. Uh, so my name is Desislava Nikova. I'm leading the hardware research and development at, uh, at Quix Quantum, uh, where we develop and sell photonic quantum computers. Uh, yeah, sorry, it doesn't seem to work. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Don't worry, we can do this. We can make a quantum <laughs> computer with 20 uh -huh. modes. Of course, we can actually change the slides. Do not worry, take your time. If you yeah. want, uh, uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask my colleague, uh, Carmen Panos, to share the slides for you. Carmen, yeah, sure. uh, please uh, open your the presentation and share them all the way from beautiful Madrid, which I has heard this really cold today. Here in Washington, it's snowy. Carmen, are you with us? Or Puya, do you have the slides? I'm yeah, I'm looking for it. Let's see. In the in the meantime, is to, uh, no, Carmen is sharing the slides already. Very well, thank you very much, Carmen. Muchas gracias. Uh, uh, this is Lava. Yeah. All you have to do is next slide, and we go to the next slide. The floor is yours. Yeah. Okay. So can we go to the next slide, please? Okay. Uh, so just to remind you all, uh, the photonic uh, what is a photonic quantum computer? So the basic components there are the sources which generate the, the photons, a processor to perform the interference and time entanglement, and the detectors to perform the measurements. Uh, so how a photonic quantum computer works is uh, the qubits are actually the photons. <laughs> they travel through the processors where you manipulate your qubits by interference of the photons, and then you perform the computation, in fact, by measuring the output states of your photons. If we go on the next slide, uh, I have listed here what, uh, some of the unique advantages of photonics for universal quantum computer. Uh, well, one of the big advantages is that it is modular uh, because we work with photons. Uh, we can easily guide them on chip where they can be manipulated, but we also we can guide them off chip by optical fibers. And this makes it scalable because in this way we can interconnect multiple chips. Uh, additionally, if we need some components to be to be to work at uh, cryogenic temperatures, because of this modularity, we can put only the chip with the detectors in the cryostat, and all the rest can remain at room temperature. Uh, so it doesn't require this uh, heavy electronic equipment. Uh, as um, it's based on a mature basis, as we use photonics and optical fibers, we leverage the existing telecom technology. Uh, and as I said, most of it can be made to work in the room temperature. Uh, it's, uh, it's based on integrated photonics. This makes it compatible with CMOS fabs, uh, which makes it affordable and easy to scale to high volumes. Um, and unlike other uh, uh, qubit uh, implementations, photons, they don't decohere fast. Uh, they preserve the information for a very long time. Uh, even if now, if you look back at the start of the universe, you can still detect the photons. Uh, so if we go to the next slide, uh, you can see that we are actually selling uh, photonic trans uh, quantum processors since 2020. Uh, and we have already sold more than 20 of them with 12, 20, 32, even up to 50 modes. Uh, in, uh, uh, in 2024, so this year, we plan to, to launch uh, our, uh, so uh, the special purpose quantum computer uh, and to provide cloud access to them. Uh, we don't only sell processors, but we also sell full uh, computing, quantum computing systems. Uh, and we have already made the first sale to, to the German Aerospace Agency. And by 2027, uh, we will deliver the, the first error corrected universal quantum computer. Uh, and if we go on the next slide, uh, of course, in quantum photonics, there are also some technology challenges. Uh, as been pointed out here, low loss is one of them, and we are working to, 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 uh, to solve this. Uh, our current devices, 
uh, they, they show 7 dB per meter. Uh, we can also measure in the lab 3 dB per meter, but we need to go below 1 dB per meter. Uh, another big uh, contribution to the loss, especially if we look into this uh, modular concept, uh, is the fiber to chip coupling, uh, where we need to go below 0 0.1 dB per meter. Um, and there it's, of course, not only the alignments, but also the, um, uh, you know, the foundries have worked uh, to do to minimize the loss related with fabrication, polishing and surface roughness. Uh, we need fast and low loss phase shifters. Uh, of course, fast is easy. It is routinely done for telecom. You can reach gigahertz per second, hundreds of gigahertz per second. Uh, low loss is also easy, you know, thermal phase shifters. Uh, but uh, combining both requirements and fast and low, low loss proves to be still uh, challenging. Uh, but we believe with heterogeneous integration, we can solve this problem. Uh, for a universal quantum computer, we would also need light sources. Uh, different types of avail are available. We've heard, you know, many here, uh, several companies here on the market. Uh, and uh, another big challenge is the control electronics and the detectors. Uh, we are actually looking now into developing single photon detectors with high efficiency, which can operate at room temperature. Uh, you know, even if the room is somewhere in uh, Lapland or in West Canada in the winter with open window. Uh, and on the control electronics, uh, there are multiple, you know, I think we can reach gigahertz speeds, but the challenge there will be how do we place, how do we integrate the electronics with, uh, uh, with silicon nitride, for example. And uh, yeah, if we go on the next slides, this will be my last slide. Thank you for having me here. And we will also be at Photonics West, so you can come to talk with us there if you have more questions. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And thanks for outlining what, what like clearly what you're looking for. And, uh, and uh, we have companies in the room, many of them that can address several of those. Uh, which one of them, next one actually, all the way from uh, Zurich, Switzerland, the experts in photo detectors, uh, Albus of the electronic detector mayor. Uh, do you, do, does your detectors, uh, how, let, let, tell us what you do and how your detectors can address the challenges that this is low uh, was talking about. Yes, thank you, Poya, for the kind introduction. My name is Hector. I'm head of product development at Albus of Electronics. I hope you can see my slide, everything fine. Yes, so we can. Um, first of all, uh, let me address, uh, it's very impressive to see this uh, community of um, engineers and scientists here to work on very innovative products, really tackling the challenges to generate and also to um, um, count for every photon without losing them. Um, so all these optoelectronics can help you to, um, to find the right detecting uh, solution. So you want to um, catch every photon you generate and you, you treat through your systems and don't want to lose anything. And so uh, Albis is a Swiss-based semiconductor company. So we are focusing on design and manufacturing of high speed, um, high sensitivity, long wavelength, three, five photodiodes and avalanche photodiodes. And we are, we are already in the business for a long time. So we have 20 years of um, excellence in manufacturing free five photodiodes. So we have our own clean room facility here, class 100 clean room in Rüschlikon, Switzerland, where we produce all of our free five photodiodes. And our products range from telecom data comps so very high speeds to laser monitoring and sensing. And uh, today specifically, I wanna um, highlight the part for high quantum efficiency. So uh, this is a high quantum efficiency photo detector, which has a quantum efficiency above uh, 95%, um, which results in a responsivity of around 1.2 um, ampere per watt. Um, so this photo diode has a large active um, diameter, which uh, simplifies the coupling to all those waveguide solutions manipulating the light. At the same time, capacitance is low, bandwidth is about 2 gigahertz, and we have very low dark current of uh, 60 picoamps. So another part which uh, we can help the community with is with packaging. So on one side, we provide um, bare die chips, as is shown on the bottom left on, on this page. But we also do flip chip mounting of arrays, as is shown on the bottom right. So this is uh, an array of high quantum efficiency photo detectors on a wraparound carrier, which would be perfectly suited for um, bot copying into a waveguide. 
and um, so we are we are um, also um, at um, Protonics West this year. So if you have any questions with regarding to high quantum efficiency photo diets or avalanche photo diets, or you just want to reach out for R R and D activities or talk about your custom uh, photo diet solution, I'm I'm there and I'm happy to talk with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Victor. Uh, this is love. I have a question for you. You're you're quick to selling. Oh, I mean, you've mentioned that you're you're selling lots of them. Can you give us some insight on what what sort of markets and find uh, applications you're selling these uh, processors and and computers to? Yeah. So we have photo diets. Our main market is obviously telecom data com. That's where the biggest the volume is. So it's not really for uh, for the for this community here, I guess. Um, we also have high linearity RF photo diets. So if you need high power um, um, photo diets, as well as um, um, three, five photo diets for FMCW LiDAR. So basically everywhere where you are in the long wavelength regime and you need high sensitivity or high speed, uh, we have a solution for that. Okay, thank you. And, and same same question for you, yeah. this is Lava. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, first, several of the companies here, they they have purchased, purchased you know, our processor, so you can find them in data centers. Uh, also, uh, research groups in, in universities who are trying to test, you know, the, the uh, quantum quantum theory, several quantum theories and the foundations, quantum mechanics, uh, they're, they're kind of our customers. Uh, yeah. Okay. And another question for you, I mean, they, these these of uh, uh, photonic circuits basically require lots of calculations and simulations as 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 part of it. What what sort of do you what sort of solutions are you currently using for those? Like softwares for 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 simulations and calculations are are those coming handy for for your applications? Uh, for your designs. Uh, so we we uh, you know we are in the business of selling uh, hardware. Uh, so our software we develop some software here in, in house, but we also collaborate with uh, other people for for other companies for simulation software. Uh, but if you're talking about algorithms, you know, for quantum computing, then of course, as any any quantum uh, computing company here, we we are very much interested. You know. Uh, to, to have more applications and more applications of the quantum computers. Okay, and and I, actually, I was talking about designing of the quantum uh, of the photonic circuits, which and, and a simulation of those, which brings me to our next speaker, uh, who actually they they make such uh, such simulators uh, from uh, Quantsign, Nicola Straw. Nicola, please share your screen and and tell us what you do and how you can help help, help uh, these photonic based quantum computing companies. Um, yes, so uh, hello everyone and um, yeah, my name's uh, Nicola. It's really good to be here and really amazing to hear about this uh, different applications and different uh, approaches to, to the photonic based quantum computing. Uh, we are a company that is actually kind of on, on two sides. So on, on one hand, we do support the development of hardware of products. Uh, so product development, digital research and development, and so on. At the same time, we are also uh, using quantum computers on our own and uh, kind of our customers of quantum computing companies. Um, the company QuantScient is based in Finland. Um, we, we are a startup, a very well fast-growing startup, and we have developed a platform, uh, a simulation platform, which is using finite element methods to uh, help you help uh, the product development. But at the same time, we also are uh, working on implementing the simulation on real quantum computers. So we, we have heard a lot about quantum computing for material science or for chemistry, uh, but we don't hear as much about product development and um, well, basically not the finite element method, but that what what would be corresponding to that in, in the quantum computing world. So we have actually succeeded in running real simulations on real quantum computers uh, in 3D. The current focus lies on uh, uh, computational fluid dynamics, uh, just because of uh, the algorithms that need to be developed. Uh, and uh, so basically you can imagine at the moment, it's kind of possible to uh, 
um, calculate large models, large simulations in a couple of hours or something like that. But imagine with quantum computing, with quantum advantage, this will be actually possible uh, to apply on like whole aircraft just in a couple of seconds. Uh, so this this is kind of the exponential advantage that we are talking uh, talking about. Or for example, plasma fusion reactors uh, just calculate and simulate all the effects at the same time. Uh, just to give you some uh, impression, so these are uh, the results of our of our simulations. So the these are pretty simple simulations. It's something that you can do with every FM software available out there. But uh, the difference here is this is quantum lattice Boltzmann method. Um, the simulation shows spread of aerosols uh, and it has been done on a real quantum computer or real quantum computer. So we are actually working with, with several of them, IBM, Continuum, just to mention some of them. Um, so yeah, what you are seeing here is really the, the first as far as we know, first application of simulation on the quantum computer. And if you want to know more, uh, get in touch, uh, discuss your application. Um, yeah, just get in touch. We are also going to be at the Photonics Vest uh, boot 2658. Uh, me and my colleagues from the call uh, from QuantScient will be there. Um, and yeah, we are happy to talk. We are happy to discuss either the product development side or the quantum computing side. Uh, just reach out to us. Thank you. And I was chatting with Nicola last week, and and he he went a little bit more in depth on what they are doing, and I was I was amazed. Uh, I I was amazed, and this is something to to look forward to and and to see what they are doing. Uh, and I'm I'm really amazed by all the technologies that the uh, optical corporate members and uh, companies are bringing to and. And uh, the next company that uh, we'll be presenting is actually has a very intriguing technology, additive manufacturing for for uh, making the components. And um, and we have Philip Dietrich from Keystone Photonics, all the way from Germany in here. Philip, why don't you share and uh, let us know what you do and how you can uh, and uh, answer the Opka question for us. Yeah, thank you very much for, for having me here. Yes, I'm Philip from Keystone Photonics, and what we do is we provide um, industry-proven products and fabrication service using additive manufacturing, so 3D printing. And this picture here shows what we basically do. We can 3D print high-precision optics on fiber arrays, but we can basically print anything which is possible, so free-form structures. We're very reproducible in terms of beam shaping. Now, this, what you see here, is not a rendering, it's real. The, um, the next picture shows you the microscopy image, and you can see how precise we can shape and focus onto something. The focus here, what you see in red, is real. This is light. It's just what you see through the microscope, and focus on calcium Germany. That's where we base. So this is unedited picture. Now, what is unique about us? We have very small structures. We can create very small structures, and we can make them ultra precise, ultra reproducible. You can see here an ant's eye, and that's a comparison of the structure. So they are so small, you basically never see them, but they're ultra precise. And we're proud to say that we're basically the only company that can do 3D manufacturing of microstructures, and at the same time give you a sigma value of the photonic components we can provide. So this here, for example, is the mode field diameter of a 3D printed structure. It ranges from minus uh, five to plus 5% 5 for 250 lenses. So we can be in the five or even uh, six sigma range of what our customers require for coupling. They would never realize this variation what we have. We're ultra precise, we're ultra reliable. We originally come, or we mostly work in wafer level testing. We supply probes to um, uh, for wafer level testing, as you can see here, for, uh, to companies like um, Form Factor. They do 12 inch wafer testing and other applications with it. Uh, we also supply to several 12 inch um, uh, uh, silicon photonic foundries. And now what we get, can give you, so now we come from wafer level testing for silicon photonic foundries. We're in manufacturing there and we want to transfer our knowledge to uh, quantum application. We already started with it and we can um, provide a complete package. So it um, uh, includes three print free from structures, application specific products. So that means in particular for cryo 4K, 
um, we can we can do liquid nitrogen immersion of our products. Nothing changes. We can do cycling from room temperature to um, 4K, etc. We have a broad wavelength range extending from 530 to more than 2,000 nanometers. So 2,300 is um, possible too. And what we can provide to you are 3D printed microstructures and that paves that can pave the way to milli dB coupling. Of course, we can also provide products for tests and measurements, also at cryo temperatures. So our underlying technology is the Sonata 1000 of Vanguard Automation. And well, that is an industry proven machine. It works and um, we turn this into product. So please contact us and uh, looking forward. Uh, Philippe, I have a quick question for you. Uh, you. You hear from everyone in the room that they are looking for preserve as many photons as possible, low loss, uh, systems, all the lowless connections and all of that. Can you make a comment on that? How do you help people save their photons, basically? Yes. So if you want to couple a fiber into chip, which is basically the challenge, we can make sure that we 3D print optics with plus minus 20 nanometer accuracy, shape and alignment to the fiber core. And that allows you to ultra precise align line, sh light, shape light, align the fiber to the chip. And that allows to go to this uh, ultra low coupling region. So when I say milli dB, I'm talking about 0 0.2 dB or below. Okay, we have a question from uh, Lightium, Amir Qadimi here. Amir, why don't you unmute and ask your question? Yeah, thank you. Actually, Philip, it's uh, thank you. I kind of asked this you know, question in the chat, but I think uh, from you. But what about the wavelengths? Uh, sort of, uh, is it suited for you know, short? I'm, I'm sure it's uh, for C band and O bands. You know, this works. But how about the shorter wavelengths? I think it's pretty also important for the quantum people, like you know, sort of neutral atoms and ion, yes. which are working at often shorter wavelengths. Yeah, so 530 works. Um, below that, our products are right now not suitable. So 530 is um uh, is the limit. 780 definitely works. Uh, uh, everything between two. Yeah. I mean, do you suffer you know, at, uh, from transmission when you go through wavelengths, or is it just? Yeah, if below 530 um uh, transmission. I mean, the 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 the, the, the process is not optimized for these wavelengths, so some absorption kicks in. So I'd say um, for the first steps, above 530 um, is, is what we're looking at. If there's a strong push, we will go below 530. We know how to do it. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. And uh, with that, I'd like to introduce our next speaker uh, all the way from uh, Colorado, which is very cold now, and uh, from the company that uses uh, neutral atoms for, uh, for uh, sorry, uh, that uses uh, trapped ions for um, quantum computing, uh, Quantinium and Laura Nugent uh, will do the presentation. Laura, all yours. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you, Boya, for the uh, invitation. So Quantinium is a trapped ion quantum computing company. I am the senior R&D manager for lasers, optics, and photonics. So today you'll be getting a ion trap quantum computing uh, presentation with an emphasis on, on optics and photonics. So at uh, Quantinium, um, we believe we have the world's uh, best in class hardware. So we build um, quantum computers based on these surface ion traps with what we call a QCCD architecture. So that's called a, a quantum charge couple device. Um, we have two uh, H series and the H is for, because we were formerly a Honeywell Quantum Solutions. So Quantinium is a merger between formerly Honeywell Quantum Solutions and um, Cambridge Quantum Computing. And so I'm very much on the hardware side, on the optics, uh, lasers and optics side. Um, we've built uh, multiple versions of our quantum computer, and those run as a subscription model, so people can uh, send their algorithms, and we run them. We have a technical team that runs the um, the circuits on our on our quantum computers. So we have um, high uh, qubit fidelities, um, ninety nine point eight to ninety nine point nine percent two qubit gate fidelities. Um, we also have uh, another side of our business, which is the best in class software. So this is the part that's formerly Cambridge Quantum Computing in the UK. And we have several um, 
uh, software in the, in the quantum algorithm development space offerings, and one is a uh, um, cybersecurity, um, the world's only quantum computing hardened encryption keys. Um, we have Inquanto, um, which is a state of the art uh, computational platform um, for chemistry uh, problems, and then uh, Ticket, which is an open access architecture um, for developing quantum algorithms, which is hardware. Um, agnostic, so it can be run on, on any gate-based quantum computer. Okay, so here I'm showing uh, on the on the top uh, left here a physical implementation of a quantum circuit. So you can see lasers flashing on and off. You can see transport. So we rely on two um, very uh, difficult uh, things, but that sort of enable our quantum charge coupled device architecture, which is transport of ions on this linear ion trap. And then also all of the lasers and optics that do many of the um, quantum operations on our ions. So we use uh, ytterbium-171 as our qubit ion, and we use a second uh, ion, a barium-138 ion on our, our currently released uh, quantum computers as a sympathetic coolant. And so we transport uh, these ions around with a sympathetic cooling ion in tow. And as you can see here, what I'm showing is all of the internal electronic states of those two ions. We have we use lasers um, for ionizing the neutral atoms to make them ions, for cooling the ions, Doppler cooling, uh, laser cooling, et cetera, for preparing quantum states, for shelving, uh, for measurement. And, and then laser-based uh, gates. So gates is how we entangle and encode quantum information onto the qubits. And so um, you can see here with the two different species of ions that we use, we have a lot of colors <laughs> that we need um, in, the, in the photonic space. So the photonics tools that we have in place right now for our currently launched quantum computers um, are, are um, uh, in the UV to near IR wavelength ranges. So these are all CW lasers and they're on the order of 10 to 15 different colors all the way from the UV to the near IR and many different powers depending on optical powers, depending on what uh, state you're addressing and what needs to happen. So from 10 microwatts to sort of multi-watt uh, optical powers. Um, right now, everything is done in sort of a bulk optics type space. So we have routing and splitting. So a single laser source um, is being, all right, just a minute, buddy. Sorry, <laughs> uh, I got a kid home from a snow day in Colorado today. So I'm trying to <laughs> multitask here. Feel free to bring him um, into the presentation. <laughs> sorry, yeah, that's right. Um, yes, yeah, so we have a single laser source to from 10 to 100 different channels. Um, we need, of course, lots of frequency stabilization. We use optical cavities, uh, frequency combs, AOMs and EOMs for on and off switching and addressing all of the hyperfine states in our ions, um, amplifiers and nonlinear optics, and of course, low noise detectors. And then eventually, all of these photonics tools, we will need some integration with ion trap systems. So here's a busy slide, but an overview of the photonics development that we've done um, in-house with key partners. Um, we're certainly certainly always looking for more partners. Uh, it's nice to see lots of folks that we've already talked to on this call, um, but we need you know low loss waveguides and components um, for splitting and routing and bends, um, splitters, on-chip splitters, um, outputs of photonic chips that are lith lith lithographically defined. Um, we've been dabbling in metamaterials um, with our partners at NIST Gaithersburg for sort of novel um, beam designs um, and other uh, things. Um, of course, we have a lot of metrology setups to look at these um, integrated picks, uh, beam profiling, uh, three-dimensional beam profiling. Um, in addition to waveguides, we're looking at grading couplers, um, outputs uh, on the chip, um, you know, looking at beams precisely crossing at where the ion sits on the trap. Um, so lots of metrology and lots of early development of sort of our photonics toolbox for all the things that we will need to scale our optical systems for the future. So the last slide here is eventually, of course, we want to integrate um, not only the photonics, but of course, I haven't touched at all on our control systems and our electronics. 
uh, mechanical, all of these things need to scale. But since I'm particularly, and this conference is particularly fixed on the photonics, um, of course, we've developed an ion-based quantum test bed for photonics with very simple ion traps to test some of these um, possibilities of photonics layers um, on and integrated with the ion trap. We need fast turn simple traps uh, to validate these, these things. Of course, we need optical interconnects that involves fiber feed-throughs, fiber attached to the chip, et cetera, which we've heard about already today. Um, a lot of these photonics chips and photonics layers will need to be either in vacuum or cryo or both. Um, and they need high, we need high power handling. Um, and we're optimizing all of the designs for our quantum operations. Um, stray light mitigation is a big concern, and then trap charging and, and top metal disturbances on our ion traps uh, due to the photonics. And so with that, I will leave it on that slide and entertain any, any questions that there might be. Thank you very much, uh, Laura, for a fantastic presentation. And also thank you for your co-star for being there with us. <laughs> we have a lot of questions in the room, but let me allow me to go to Canada because uh, this is the most beautiful time of the year to go to Canada. Shamak, thank you very much for being with us from CNC Microsystems. I know you want to help her on photonic integration. Tell us what's on your mind. Um, sure, yeah. Hi, Laura. This was very informative. Everything is really great. So I, you know, I, I can't barely take a break from, from the seminar. I got one major question for you. Um, I know that in, inherently um, ion traps and ionic uh, quantum uh, computers are, are very stable in terms of coherence time and all some other hurdles that we have with photonics. But what is the major problem with scaling, for especially for miniaturization? Is, is there is there a major hurdle um, in in this way of you know realizing a quantum computer that requires you know, I don't know the breakthrough or at this time, we're just talking about engineering optimization. Thanks. Right. So, you know, the, the biggest challenge, and it, it sort of encompasses all of the different uh, disciplines, is, you know, we do need to scale our qubit number, of course. Um, and uh, as, as everyone does, um, but we'd like to scale our qubit number while not having to scale linearly with, say, number of beams, for example, um, this picture here that shows kind of the beams free space uh, over the trap. So we'd like to um, be able to scale our qubit number without, without having to linearly scale our number of beams. The same goes with electronic signals. So all of the electrodes that are on the, the trap here. Um, uh, and so we don't want to have, you know, uh, a mag an order of magnitude <laughs> uh, increase in our electrode signals. Um, while we are, you know, getting more qubits on the trap. And so uh, we are making, you know, more uh, larger traps that can hold more qubits. Uh, and there are interesting ways to do that. Um, as far as um, photonics, typically uh, the biggest challenges are, you know, the while we, you know, free space optics, um, and bulk optics and those sorts of things are, are bulky and, and they take um, a lot of space. Uh, we are able to get very good precision with our frequency stability and our um, pointing stability and these sorts of things. And so we need to maintain, you know, low noise um, lasers and, and optical systems uh, in order to address these, these quantum states. Um, and so to do that while also introducing photonic components, you know, in the visible and uh, especially is, is a big challenge. Thank you very much, Laura. Another question is coming all the way from Switzerland, Amir, from yeah, Insulator Slytheum. Uh, Laura, this is amazing. Uh, I was quite impressed. So uh, actually, quick question. Um, uh, I mean, you have been like, dealing with a lot of AM wavelengths. Uh, so I mean, from UV to near infrared. So, which ones are you actually trying to integrate? I suppose you are not integrating like all of them, right? Because especially UV ones are ridiculously difficult, but <laughs> visible and near infrared might be possible. That's that's correct. Yeah. So immediately, the plan is not to integrate all you know fifteen wavelengths. <laughs> there are certainly ones that make sense to integrate first, and one of those is the the gate lasers. So that is the Raman detuned system here that sort of addresses the, the quantum states and, and does the entanglement. And the reason for that is because the pointing stability here, I show like there's two laser beams crossing on the trap. Um, and that 
uh, position and phase tolerance of those where those two beams cross um, is very difficult uh, to maintain, and, and it's very uh, affects the the fidelity of our of our laser base gates. And so, to have those photonically integrated on trap, then any other noise that comes from you know outside of the vacuum chamber or even in you know inside the cold head is all kind of common noise on the trap. And so that's well, really let, let, let me address okay. this. But first of all, just so you know, Amir is actually working very hard on assembling a consortium for some idea that he has in mind. Get back to him on that. But Laura, one of your challenges is frequency stabilization. And that's one of the challenge for everyone. I think you all know my friend, Gabriel, Gabriel Thomas from Menlo System. How can you help Laura on the frequency stabilization? Well, this is something that's basically uh, Menlo's bread and, bread and butter, um, frequency stabilization. And, and Laura, I, we've met before. Um, we yeah. were able to share a platform at the Laser Congress 2022. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, Laura is well placed to understand uh, our frequency stabilization um, capabilities. <laughs> do, you, okay. do you bring one slide with you to show us? A I, bit did. Of on that? Yes. I did. I did. Tell us. So where everybody knows that Gabriel is a very big fan of Optica and that we are a really big fan of Gabriel. Uh, that's uh, very kind of you to say. Can you see my screen? Crystal clear. Okay, super. Um, so basically I'm Gabriel Thomas. I'm from Menlo Systems and we are headquartered uh, near Munich in Germany. Uh, and we are known for our precision photonics tools that are enabling some of the most complex uh, applications in the world. And of course, none more uh, complex than uh, quantum technologies, especially quantum computing. Um, so I've just got a few things that I wanted to show today. Um, so two major tools that we have uh, in our toolkit are our optical frequency comb and our ultra stable reference systems. Um, so the, an optical frequency comb, for those who don't know, is a, a very special form of ultra-fast laser that has been stabilized with an inch of its life. Uh, and you end up with a spectrum that looks exactly like a comb that you might comb your hair with. Um, and this can be used basically as a frequency ruler to take very, very precise measurements. The ultra-stable reference that we have is an ultra-stable cavity with an external uh, cavity diode laser that's locked to it. Uh, and what we have done to enable the quantum world is to combine these two uh, into a 19 inch rack system, as you can see just on, on the uh, top left hand side there. Um, and that is a fully integrated system, frequency comb locked to the uh, ultra stable reference. And then the frequency comb is used to discipline whatever CW laser is needed for your application. Um, and we also have the, the, the ability to be able to uh, integrate these CW lasers into the entire system. So basically all the end user needs to do is to think about that application. They get a fiber with the light coming out, or if it's UV, then we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a free space option for them. Uh, but basically it just delivers your comb disciplined light. And when I say comb disciplined, what I mean is we have a very, very narrow line width, um, typically a subhertz line width that comes out of it at pretty much in any wavelength you want. Uh, and we've uh, measured the, the fractional frequency uh, instability of this, and it's down to about 10 to the minus 18 in the short term. Um, <clears throat> I've mentioned here in these slides, well, my, my colleague Benjamin, who was supposed to give this slide today, unfortunately, he couldn't make it. He's prepared these few slides with uh, example projects that we've been involved in to basically kind of give you an idea of the type of um, platforms that can be used in. So the first is the Munich Atoms and the RIMAX project that is funded by the, the Federal, in, uh, Federal Ministry of uh, Education and Research here in Germany. Um, Munich Atoms is a neutral strontium quantum computing platform, and RIMAX is a neutral ytterbium uh, approach to quantum computing. Um, We've talked about cold atoms here, but it's also put the, our quantum laser system is perfectly suitable for trapped ion approaches. Um, and we do also have another project, which is uh, more of a photonics approach. That's a collaboration with Quant, where we're, we're using uh, basically systems, um, sort of integrated circuits type, type approaches. Um, and we're, we have um, a very compact frequency comb that's being used for that um, to, be, to enable basically the entire um, squeezing uh, of, of, of the qubits. 
I've also mentioned a couple of uh, other projects that are not directly related to, to quantum computing. First of all, Solis 1G. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because this is going to be a strontium, a strontium lattice clock that will be in space. Now, for space, you know, I don't think there is a more demanding environment to be able to, to develop um, technologies for this. Um, and we're also aware that we need to have size, weight and power restrictions to go up onto the rockets and so on. So we're developing much, much smaller uh, combs and, and ultra stable reference systems to go into that. Um, I think swap questions are also uh, an issue in the quantum computing world. Um, so this is something, you know, there's no greater motivation than somebody who wants to integrate uh, something uh, or into, the, into their own quantum computing platform. So we're always open for collaborations um, and discussions that go further. Thank you very much, Gabriel. I think many people are going to come to you. Basically, you have done, for many of our members, subhertz locking of light sources, and this one that is very much needed on this on this network. But to close the meeting, I want to go to one company that has meant the world to me in my life. I want to go back to Enschede, this time to Lionix. You're working with many of the companies here. Many of them show challenges on integrated photonics. Send us off the way that we Deserve. It's cold outside. Make us warm, Sadon. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Jose. This is a great introduction. Uh, so, Linux International, it is also pretty cold out here, but maybe not as cold as everywhere else. Um, we make uh, silicon nitride chips and modules. Uh, we make chips for uh, Quix Quantum. We make chips for ion traps for ETH Zurich. Uh, we make 78, 718 nanometer lasers that are all integrated on silicon nitride. Uh, quite a few things. Uh, that's one of the benefits of being in the business since 2001. Um, we have, because of the, actually the broad number of applications that we're in, I'm going to focus only on a few things that uh, I have pictures of here. These are all devices that we have made. Um, for one, we have low optical losses that are in propagation and uh, across uh, interfaces. These are typically, uh, you can get them lower than one decibel now, uh, both in propagation, one decibel per meter, and uh, in insertion losses, one decibel per uh, facet. We also have pretty mature processes, um, mature enough that we can have an entire um, device be on one four inch wafer. That's the one that's on the top right there. Um, it's a great way to minimize interfaces to have none of them at all. Um, and then you can have two to 3000 actuators on chip and then flip chip the entire wafer onto a PCB. Uh, our experience is pretty interdisciplinary. We make stuff for space, for telecom, for sensing, for SATCOM. That, that picture on the bottom right there is a ceramic package for actually a satellite communication uh, device that we made. Um, and then we also have uh, the entire visible light range uh, accessible to our silicon nitride. It can cover from 405 nanometer to 2350 nanometer. Um, so that's kind of the general stuff that we can do for everybody. We can design the chips, we can fabricate them in the clean room, we can assemble them into modules, we can package them as complete devices. And what I would love to uh, have everybody here do is um, either you scan the QR code at the bottom right there to go to our website and have a look at uh, some of our information, or come meet us at uh, Photonics West since uh, so many of you are going. Thanks, Jose. Uh, uh, yes, scan the code, and I would like to ask you very quickly, very quickly, one challenge that you would like the rest of the room to help you with. That's the best way of closing the event. I think the, the biggest challenge now is for us as uh, Photonic Integrated uh, uh, Circuit developers is uh, to really hear the, the problems that are coming up next. We heard a lot about the making every photon count. We heard a lot about uh, making everything scalable. Okay, past that, because we already have projects on these things, past that, what will be the next challenge? And uh, if you can't come up with it here, then you can always come up with it and then send it by email to me. And then you can, of course, collaborate with Optica as a platform to find ways to find ways of working together. I would like to remind everyone that if you want to get in touch with any of the participants today, all you have to do is send us an email, jposto at optica.org, and we'll make the introduction. This meeting has been the result of very hard work by many people at Optica. The best thing you can do is to make sure that after this meeting, to get in touch with the people participating. All of you have received the participant list. All of you will have access to the recording of the video. Share it with your network. Make sure that we keep momentum, that we keep growing as an industry platform. I would like to acknowledge 
the corporate engagement department team, and in particular, Sylvia Diana, the director of peak technology, our camera panels, the Marcon lead for Europe. Until the next time, this was Jose Pozo on behalf of Optica. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And now I would like to ask my IT department to cut the YouTube stream. Uh, for those YouTubers, that was it. Thank you very much for joining. And for everyone else, uh, you you had to pick up the children or remove the snow from outside or 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 or, or tell the 